Hello London! First of all, thank you very much to the UK Garrison and the Rebel Legion for the escort. Yes, thank you. Awesome stuff. So just to start with, my name's Alex. I'm sort of UK fan lead uh, on sales over here, um, and I'm super excited to be here. Um, but more excited to introduce our friends from the US. We've got Patrick and Sam. Hey guys, how's it going? Glad to be here. Never, I've heard rumors of London Comic Con. Really? Yeah. What What are the rumors you've heard, Sam? That it's like just as big as San Diego. It is. It is pretty. It nice. does. This is yeah. super impressive. I've been absolutely in love with it today. <laughs> That's awesome. It's good to hear. And yeah, no, it's awesome to have you guys here as well. I have to say, Patrick, you've aged horribly in a year since that. <laughs> <laughs> that is a picture of my son. My wife put him in a Chewbacca outfit right before I left, so had to get him up on the screen and uh, kind of shill him out. So that's good. Fantastic. All righty. Should we dive into it? I think we should crack on. Fantastic. All righty. So first thing we're going to do is talk about some of the convention exclusives that we have for sale and also some of them are available for uh, raffle and signed by Sam. So Sam, you want to tell us about this one? I would love to and I'm going to kind of blindly recall. Oh, it's the last <laughs> repack. All right, uh, so this was an awesome item to bring to the vintage collection. Uh, ultimately, it offered uh, three versions of Luke kind of tethered throughout the saga, which uh, was great, uh, really aligned perfectly to kind of the completion of the Skywalker saga with uh, episode nine approaching. But uh, we have uh, Luke in his uh, Yavin flight suit, uh, it's kind of representing a new hope. We have uh, um, Luke Skywalker in uh, Stormtrooper disguise, which also from a new hope. Um, and then lastly, we have uh, sort of the uh, Jabba's palace version of Luke Skywalker. I mean, they look awesome. Is, is this the first time we've seen them in vintage? Or? So there's a couple of new elements here. Um, Luke on the uh, kind of his pilot card bag, this is the first time we're seeing him in the vintage collection. Um, in Stormtrooper Luke, this is the first time being as a part of that line. And then uh, Jedi Luke has actually had a couple different Quite places. a history. Oh, yeah. It's been a slew of mistakes, but we're thrilled to finally get a, the right one out. Um, the right accessories, and finally the right ropes, so it's good, good piece. Fantastic. And this one is not available for sale here, but we do have a few samples that Sam, again, our lead designer for the Star Wars fan business, will be signing uh, in the booth throughout the weekend, and I believe the team will be raffling them off, so a chance to get this item. Wow. Absolutely. Alrighty, moving on. Our next item. Uh, so next up, this is Truly, uh, my personal favorite. They're all your item. personal favorite, aren't they? So I'll have that going throughout the, the day today. But uh, this is Boba Fett on the uh, the original 1979 card back. So what this ends up representing is the 40th anniversary of the character Boba Fett. Uh, Boba Fett, uh, before the release of Empire Strikes Back, actually came out on um, his own Star Wars double bar card back. Um, and we're able to sort of pay homage to that 40 years later. So six inch uh, version of this figure uh, actually released in the original Kenner colors, uh, sort of been updated stylistically, so it still feels like it aligns to the Black Series, but um, we really love this collaboration with Lucasfilm where we're able to sort of bring this in and uh, you know have this great representation of the character. Absolutely, and this one is available for sale. You can see it up on the screen here at our retail partners and only available at conventions. You can't find this item in brick and mortar stores. So if you like the looks of it, uh, check it out. Next up, ooh. ooh. So big newness. Cool looking new trooper. This yeah. summer we had uh, the release of the Sith Trooper. So this was awesome because this was a design we were working on for a while at Lucasfilm. We really had no idea how it was going to be infused into the film. Uh, and it wasn't until we actually Kind of came to those final stages of the package where I actually start to see kind of the story elements and even get a name for it. Uh, so seeing the new insignia uh, on the package itself and associating it as being the Sith Trooper uh, definitely led to a bit of speculation within the office in terms of what that truly meant. Uh, but the figure itself is gorgeous. It's an all-new Trooper design. Definitely borrows a lot of inspiration from sort of the natural evolution of the First Order Trooper. Uh, but then it infuses all these great elements that we've sort of seen throughout the universe. Feels very familiar to the progression of like a Phase 1 to a Phase 2 clone. Um, what we've been able to do here is really 
armor this out with all these great accessories that we've seen sort of uh, brought throughout concept art and uh, ultimately uh, how they'll appear in the film. So, uh, great five accessories for the figure itself. Yeah. And it looks awesome. Absolutely. Nice red design. Cool. So these three items are all available for signing by Sam, our lead designer in the booth, so come on down and check it out. Um, our final convention exclusive, uh, this one is close to my heart. So uh, this one is also available for sales. This is an EU uh, launch convention exclusive. So you all are able to buy this today. No one in the US can get this. This is something we've done the past few years because uh, we've kind of woken to the fact, we should have done it sooner, that uh, we have fantastic, passionate fans here in the Woo! UK, here in Europe, absolutely. So this is a little something special. Uh, if you like the looks of this, this is a Luke Skywalker, Skywalker Strikes uh, convention exclusive. Uh, we've got Luke Skywalker in that outfit, his Yavin ceremony outfit. Apparently, he doesn't have time to change after that ceremony. He just charges into, I guess, months of adventures without changing his clothes in true Star Wars fashion, so super clean. Uh, but basically, where's this outfit in all of the comic book adventures? So this item is a comic, -con uh, comic book dedicated item uh, with that comic book inspired packaging and uh, comic exclusive accessories, including uh, Jedi journals, uh, black Flash shield helmet, uh, the training droid, all of which are actually different from the F4 version. So, really cool item available here. Again, if you like the looks of it, check it out and get it. Alrighty, so those are our convention exclusives. Next up, if you're a Star Wars fan, and I know you are because you're here, you know that the new trailer for Episode 9 dropped earlier this week. We are gratuitously playing it in all of our, uh, all of our panels just because it's so amazing. So we're going to take a look now to get us all in the mood, get us all excited. So the latest trailer for Star Wars Episode 9, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah! I have to advance it once more. It's an instinct. probably over 50 times, I still get goosebumps. Like, the music, the imagery, it's mo almost more overwhelming to watch it over my shoulder. I know, exactly, I was thinking like, that. that. Even with like a crick in my neck, it's still super inspiring. It might be my favorite cinematics for the second half of yeah. it, just in terms of just take on the original. The imagery, yeah. 
brings it all full circle. So we are excited. Obviously, we are in the season of Triple Force Friday. Um, so we're going to share some images here now uh, of our team on Triple Force Friday. We're fans too. This was us going out to the stores um, on Triple Force Friday, checking out the merchandise. Uh, we just wanted to share this with you uh, to show you how excited we were too. Looking, looking good, guys. Yeah, you can see Sam and I up there, uh, looking really excited. So looking tired. Yeah. Right. Triple Force Friday a month ago kicked off all the merchandise for Rise of Skywalker, The Mandalorian, and Jedi Fallen Order. More properties than we've ever done before in a launch season. Uh, Triple Force Friday kicked off on GMA and through our live stream. Uh, if you haven't checked this out, it's on the Star Wars YouTube page. Really cool. Has all the new product. Uh, you can see some of it here and we're going to talk about it later in the panel. Uh, and then the excitement continued through our desk sides. Uh, again, you can see a lot of the product that was revealed here. Black series, kid-focused items, just a lot of great stuff. And some of those kid-focused items... Sam is going to talk to us about Yeah, so I think in our humble opinion, the one that sort of stole the show probably has to be our Ultimate Dio, Absolutely. which I'm pretty sure Daisley Ridley referred to as an engineering marvel, yep. so our, uh, our, our team at uh, Hasbro was pretty happy with that. Our engineer, when he heard that, he swooned a little <laughs> bit. I think his resume is basically now yeah. just that line and nothing else. I think he put Daisy as a, a reference. reference. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, cool. Do we want to take a look at the uh, yeah, you commercial? Yeah. Pull up. Sounds good. Sure. All right, here we go. Featured in the upcoming Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Say hello to Ultimate Dio. Controllable via smart device. Responsive to voice and sounds. And a big fan of playing ball. Ultimate Dio. Just the droid you're looking for. I require ask your parents. Smart device and badges not included. So, it's an awesome droid form. Again, it's, it really is an engineer he's, marvel. He's brilliant. And we, we've actually got him on the stand here in the UK. So, if you, if you want to come and try him out, you can come, play with come and have a play. Sure. Self-balancing mono wheel. Uh, again, you have that full emotion in terms of the emoting antennas, which I think end up being my favorite part for the character. But to really just sort of see him come to life on stage or in your home is awesome. I suppose the other question is, Ultimate is amazing, is, is that the only place that Dio's appearing in the line? We have uh, Dio actually in a couple of other places, so in terms awesome. of uh, kind of unique Very characters. convenient. It's almost as though we planned this. <laughs> we have uh, kind of our, our Spark and Go Dio as well as our uh, RC Dio. I think the RC Dio is also uh, could be played, and then we have them uh, infused throughout our Black Series line. Fantastic. Alrighty. Should we take a look at another product? Let's take a look at another product. Sounds good. I think this one's more to the lighter side? Yeah, I think so. A little right. more lighthearted. Let's take a look. <laughs> a Star Wars lightsaber like no other for a very different kind of battle. Ah! Record your own sounds. <laughs> and the fight for the funniest. Choose from 10 different Star Wars sounds. Let's go for something different. Unleash your screen with a Star Wars screensaver lightsaber, each sold separately. So a very fun, different way of being able to experience a lightsaber, but uh, we know that we do a lot of die-hard product, uh, definitely for uh, the Star Wars fan community, um, but it's nice to be able to do something, because it is so pop culture relevant, uh, to do something that's a little bit more uh, shareable and fun to play with. Have fun with Star Wars. Absolutely. I will say, uh, obviously a more kid-focused item, but uh, fans have had fun with it too. I love I recorded my Emperor impression, uh, you know, so be it. Jedi, and actually convinced one of our engineers that it was a secret Easter egg that someone had put in the item, so that was a proud moment. Um, okay, so those were some of our cooler kid-focused items, but we also revealed vintage and black series items for Triple Force Friday, uh, and these are some of those items. So Vintage Collection is obviously one of our favorite lines. Fan focused, that classic three and three quarters inch scale, super articulated, highly decoed with soft goods. Um, this is our first wave. This is in stores right now, revealed for Triple Force Friday a month ago. This is half of the wave. Three great items here. Uh, the Knight of Ren, obviously, we've kind of you know heard about the Knights of Ren for the past four years. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a, a better glimpse at them in this film. But the first time they've been in either of our lines, 
They appeared in the vintage collection first. We had a lot of fun kind of uh, deciding on which figure would be in here. Um, also, you can see up here, all of these uh, film outs, uh, obviously, uh, we, we don't have film outs yet uh, because the movie hasn't come out yet. So all of these are actually composites of set photos and the characters. So we had to be really creative and collaborative with Lucasfilm in order to get card backs for these. So this, as you're seeing right here, is the other half of our launch wave that is in stores right now. Uh, two of these items uh, have appeared earlier, so the Luke Skywalker is that item you saw in that convention exclusive that you can win a signed copy by Sam today. Woo! Woo! Uh, doing a lot of signing. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to keep you busy. Uh, the Poe Dameron was actually revealed almost a year ago at Luca uh, on this tour in Italy. Uh, since that time, as we learned more about the film, we learned that he has an updated helmet uh, for Episode 9. We were actually able to update that and, as you see, put it on an Episode 9 card back. So really excited to have that in the line. Um, and then, of course, the vintage world is all about world building. So, Sam, can you tell us about the vehicles? So, yeah, uh, we, again, sort of aligning with Triple Force Friday, we had a lot of great entertainment to be able to support, and uh, we wanted to be able to do that because we have the world building through the vintage collection. So, uh, we had some familiar forms, which are going to be like the T-65 X-Wing. For the first time ever, we have it in the vintage collection as being Luke Skywalker's Red 5. Uh, we have an all-new look to the ATSD as part of the Mandalorian by way of the ATSD Raider. Uh, which actually comes with uh, a partial new figure of this uh, Klaatuian um, kind of raider, uh, which is a great assembly of new parts and classic ones to really be able to deliver uh, that great new form. Uh, and then lastly, all new tooling, again designed specifically for the vintage collection, uh, was our new T70 uh, X-Wing. So It looks unreal. So, new features on that one? Like what, what? Yeah, so again, especially as we've started developing vehicles directly for the vintage collection, it's really about um, kind of going beyond just sort of being able to deliver the form. So it's a great, it's a new size uh, and just is featured with accessories that are going to be relevant to the vintage consumer. So you have fully uh, uh, retractable landing gear that folds up and closes up with doors that um, close over them as well as uh, a ladder that can stow underneath uh, and removable panels kind of revealing the inner workings of the, uh, the T-70. Sounds awesome. Fantastic. All righty. And then we revealed these at New York Comic Con a few weeks ago, our Wave 2. Yeah, so we have a couple new figures that are coming in, really sort of seeing their debut on the vintage card back. First up is going to be the Jawa. Um, again, hasn't seen a vintage card back since the original uh, 1977 Kenner wow. figures. Um, so we were really excited to get this um, back out onto the card. This is a figure we did in the Black Series 3 and 3 quarter inch line, but it's a great, um, great visual representation of the Jawa itself. Next up is going to be, I think, my personal favorite of the wave, which is going to be the Imperial Shadow Squadron. Uh, the Shadow Squadron uh, troopers have been around for a while, both in terms of expanded universe, and they've started reutilizing them in some of the, uh, the video games. So it's great to see this form come back around. We're able to use our Rogue One Stormtrooper, but then infuse a, a number of new accessories, including a new officer's pauldron, uh, ammo pouches, and uh, really being able to build out um, the armory with some new weapons. Does it present many challenges working off a video game instead of instead of movie or? It, it actually uh, works a lot like it does with Lucasfilm. We sort of have that partnership that expands to um, the video game creators. So in terms of working with like Respawn or with EA, uh, we're able to uh, work in a very similar fashion. And again, Lucasfilm sort of acts as that uh, conduit to bring uh, that collaboration together. Oh, all right. Uh, so next up was an all-new figure that we uh, revealed in New York. This is going to be um, the Sith Trooper. So much like the Trooper that we saw uh, revealed for San Diego Comic-Con, uh, this is the form for the Vintage Collection. So again, borrowing that great new design aesthetic and really being able to bring that bright red Trooper um, and then seeing that Rise of Skywalker uh, figure sort of composite to uh, build out that great card back. Absolutely. Alrighty, so now getting into the Black Series. So our other favorite fan-focused expression. So newer. I know, amazing. Love them. They look great. They all are here. It's amazing how that works. Uh, Six-inch scale uh, allows for kind of more of that character detail. Still super articulated, highly decoed. 
more modern packaging, and obviously, just like the Vintage Collection, had a very robust line at launch. So up here, you're seeing our launch wave. Again, currently available in stores. Uh, some great figures there from all across uh, the Triple Force Friday properties. So you can see Cal and the Second Sister Inquisitor from Jedi Fallen Order. You can see uh, the Mandalorian himself and the off-world Jawa from The Mandalorian. And then four great figures from uh, Star Wars Episode Nine. So a great Triple Force Friday launch wave. Uh, and what was really special uh, is we had this limited edition, first edition, white packaging that we did for just the first wave. Um, so, so what? What was, what was the reason for the white packaging? That's a great question, uh, which I've heard from some fans. Uh, so basically the idea here, we know Star Wars is all about kind of these story arcs and like hearkening back to the beginning. And obviously in this season of the end of the Skywalker saga, where you saw the trailer there, like lots of echoes back to the beginning, we wanted to go to the beginning of our Black Series line for new entertainment. Our very first Black Series figure we launched for new entertainment was our global convention exclusive in 2015 early release of the First Order Stormtrooper in white packaging. So to celebrate that, we wanted to put this launch wave all in similar white packaging um, to celebrate that kind of returning back to the beginning. And obviously it allows some great kind of graphical treatments. The Yeah, I personally love what it did to the package. I actually, in some cases, found the illustrations yeah. so much stronger on white because you always utilize the, the black background to sort of act as that... Um, Shadow point. A nice so to be able to yeah. bring that onto the white, uh, submit for representation. So good, maybe it'll be the white. I don't have to get more. No, it won't be. <laughs> uh, so that's that white packaging. We also had these great, uh, uh, very limited edition. Uh, they might not still be in stores. I don't know. It's been a month. I uh, have to go on the hunt for them, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but this was our carbonized collection. So again, took four figures out of those Triple Force properties and put them in this carbonized form. So. so what makes it carbonized? What's special about these? Exactly. Uh, well, the packaging obviously has that metallic treatment, uh, so you have very different packaging. And in the case of the First Order uh, Jet Trooper, uh, there's actually a different substrate. It's not the same cardboard with the treatment. It's actually a different physical material that you need to get that uh, carbonized effect. Uh, the product itself is very different as well, right, Sam? That's correct. So, uh, kind of different from anything that we do. A lot of, uh, you know, Black Series, anything we do from a figure standpoint, you know, they're definitely molded to be able to utilize the base colors that the figures are um, done in. Then we add paint operations over that for weathering and effects like that. For the Carbonized Collection, every single paint operation on these armored characters is painted. So there is no mold color that's revealed, so everything in terms of the armor joints. I think one of my favorites is probably the Sith Trooper, where we actually molded the figure in silver uh, and then actually painted it in a translucent red metallic, so you get kind of a candied apple effect. Wow. Then you have that um, black 7C yeah. metallic uh, for the undersuit, so it's impressive. I love black 7C, that's my favorite deco treatment. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So we're really excited about this collection. Again, if you like the looks of them, uh, see if they're still in stores. Um, so moving on, again, revealed at New York Comic Con just a few weeks ago, our Wave 2. So for Wave 2, I'll double check who's up there. Jana. Uh, we have uh, Cara Dune and Jaina. So again, great way to balance out sort of the new entertainment. Jaina is such an awesome figure because as we, you know, received a reference, it was like, all right, which one's our signature weapon? And they're like, oh no, they're all signature weapons. So it's like, Okay, so we'll do them all. Um, so she has, uh, you know, a bow, which we haven't really seen yeah. utilized in uh, kind of this live action entertainment, which was awesome. Her quiver is actually repurposed from a uh, Stormtrooper forearm armor. Um, so as part of the entertainment, so it was great to be able to uh, add that with the removal arrows from the quiver it can be loaded into the bow itself. Um, and of course she has her holster roll side pistol and kind of this translucent cape to uh, the figure. So, great new form, really excited, and I think Naomi Aki was here yesterday Yeah, got to check it out. Got to uh, take pictures next to the figure. So next up we have uh, Cara Dune, um, again, awesome new companion for the Mandalorian series. Really, really happy with how uh, we were able to take advantage of um, that Gina portrait with the photo reel. Um, and of course she has her heavy duty um, rifle, holsterable pistol, and then she actually has a knife that can unsheath from the boot for more of that close combat melee. Absolutely. All right, and next up is gonna be the First Order Jet Trooper. Um, this one was awesome when we saw the concept art for it because this is the first time from a theatrical standpoint that we've really seen these troopers intentionally going airborne. 
Um, so, you know, we've seen it through Rebels, we've seen it in Clone Wars, um, definitely um, with things in terms of the Mandalorians as well, but to actually get a trooper strapped to a rocket, uh, it's an awesome pack, and again, some great new uh, trooper variation for the line. Absolutely. And finally, ooh, Wedge and Tilly. So did anyone in here vote for Wedge as part of the 40th? Yeah, a, a few right, bands. A few there. So, Wedge actually rose to the top. I think he ended up being our second too, choice, yeah. uh, most requested character from Empire Strikes Back. Unfortunately, he did lose to Luke Dagobah, but thankfully we had an F4 version of him yeah. kind of already planned for the line, so uh, it was kind of a happy accident. Um, we're we're well. always a fan of those. Yeah. Uh, and it's, uh, again, a great way to uh, get some of these alternate uh, rebel pilots into the line. Absolutely. Alrighty, and then our role play item. Role play. So this is our new Force Effects Elite lightsaber. Um, it's uh, based on Kylo Ren's uh, lightsaber form for um, the Rise of Skywalker, and uh, Elite is something like we've ever done before. Yeah, I mean we've we've got one of these on stand. If you if you come by the stand, you can you can have a go, get some great pictures with it. But I suppose the main question is. So Elite, what, what makes it Elite? Yeah, so uh, when we in introduced kind of our Force Effects, our signature series lightsabers um, years ago, it's sort of just been changing up the hilts, uh, and at one point we did removable blades, but what we set out to do with Elite was really redefine the technology that's inside of these sabers, so not only does it uh, come out swinging with an accelerometer, but now they actually utilize a fully addressable LED blade, so each LED is individually programmable along the blade, so not only do you get super smooth sweeps and uh, uh, kind of blade progressions to the ignition, but you also can, for Kylo, we actually get this great crackling effect happening throughout the blade. Uh, and when you strike it, it actually, the whole blade clashes white. And then my favorite feature is not only can you have blast effects appear along the blade, uh, but if you use, we have a secondary button so you can drag it uh, along the floor, do wall strikes, and the whole end of the blade actually changes to molten white, and you have sort of this heat billowing off of it. So it's really impressive. Uh, the addressable LEDs, we have fully removable blades, uh, we have barrel plugs that go back in, and then we have this all new metal infused stand uh, to really be able to show it off with them without blades. And yeah, like I said, it's, it's unreal. I've, I've, I've probably spent too much time with it on the stand up, I'm being honest, but it's it, it definitely recommend coming down and, and having a go, for awesome. sure. Certainly sounds the beat. Very late. <laughs> awesome. So we are basically working through time here. We started off with our Triple Force Friday reveals, then we talked about our later 2019 items that we revealed at New York Comic Con. The items we're going to show here, we literally revealed less than 24 hours ago. We were in Paris yesterday at Paris Comic Con, uh, which is also great, uh, and literally after, the, uh, we did a panel, did some reveals, hopped on the channel, hopped on a tube, ended up in our hotel, woke up this morning and we're here. But we revealed these items yesterday, starting with a new item in the vintage collection. It was that wonderful Cara Dune that we saw in the Black Series. So this was just revealed yesterday. Our very first figure that we've ever shown in the vintage collection from the Mandalorian, which we're all really excited about. A lot of Mandalorian excitement. Uh, similar kind of design that Sam talked about based on that Gina Carano portrait uh, with all that great kind of armory of accessories and weapons. So we, we revealed this and then we showed it in the booth at Paris Comic Con, but we had to leave an hour later. So this is- Did you bring it with you? We brought it with us, exactly. We didn't leave it in Paris. It is in the booth right now, so if you want to head to our booth, you can check out this figure. And again, other than a few people for an hour in Paris, you'll be the first person to see this figure. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we also had some great Black Series reveals, didn't we, Sam? Uh, so uh, we're really, uh, uh, definitely as we sort of get into the reveals, we have a few more, especially as we get into next week as well. Um, one of the big areas that we've found our line to really be limited for the Black Series is uh, in support of the prequel um, trilogy. So uh, we definitely want to bolster a few new items to do that, but we need more of our uh, Jedi heroes in the line to be able to do that. So yesterday, uh, first step that we revealed was uh, Ep2 Anakin. Uh, so this is a great new addition to the line. It's a new portrait, new forearm, uh, new hand, because again, he hasn't had that arm chopped off by Darth Tyrannus yet. Um, and we're able to deliver that with the, uh, his lightsaber as it appears in episode two. Um, so it was great to get that Padawan representation of the character. And then of course he's gonna need a, a master to a go mentor to kind of help him and guard him from trouble, yeah. Some guidance. 
lose them along the way, uh, which is going to be our Ep2 uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I actually think this is the best representation of the Hugh McGregor portrait that we've been able to do. Uh, there is variations to the outfit in terms of definitely the, uh, the coloring and the effect there, but um, the portrait, the separate hair, and really being able to take advantage of the photoreal um, Decided to have this on the line. Absolutely. Have we? Have we? I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to pitch it up to you, Sam. Have we seen Anakin and Obi Wan in the Black Series before? You have, Patrick. I have. Great Crazy. question. Um, Obi Wan's been in a couple different uh, iterations, just because he's sort of carried throughout the trilogy. So uh, his first release was as uh, the Episode uh, Three uh, Anakin or Dice Star with Obi Wan. Obi Wan, yeah. So Obi Wan is uh, first place in the Obi Wan would be very offended if you also get them confused. Also, episode three, so I saved it there. Uh, <laughs> but we had a, an episode four um, release. Oh, nice. uh, we had our episode one. We had a force uh, spirit. Yeah. We had the force ghost, yeah. and uh, we had our clone commander Obi Wan. Yeah. Uh, so he's been a lot of places yeah. in the line. Anakin, we've been a little more shy about. Anakin, we just yeah. have our episode three. Until now. Until now. Yeah. Righting the wrongs. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Different entertainment property. Fair enough. Um, these two items are not down in the stand. Basically, we wanted to reveal some items. These aren't going to be out until 2020. We wanted to give everyone here kind of very early looks. Uh, so these are basically so early in the process, we don't have them to see. Uh, but again, we've got that great Cara Dune, so come check that out. Uh, so those were our fan-focused uh, items in Paris, and as Sam mentioned, kind of the prequels are, are getting a lot more love now. Like, I love the prequels there, and again, I think it's appropriate in this era of kind of the end of the Skywalker saga. The prequels kicked it off, we've got some gaps there, so we're filling those in. So today we don't have any prequel figures to reveal, but in the next week uh, on our EU convention tour, we will reveal four more Black Series prequel characters. So if you love Black Series, if you love the prequels, and I know you do, uh, check us out uh, over the next week because we'll be revealing more Prequel Black series. All right. We've shown you a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool 2019 stuff. A lot of cool 2020 stuff. Who wants to see some stuff that no one in the world has ever seen before? Uh, we might end this presentation right now. Who wants to see some stuff that no one's ever seen before? There we go. These are our exclusive reveals to London Comic Con. We've done reveals here at London the past two years, but we are doing more this year than we've ever done before. We have two kid-focused items to reveal and three fan items. We're very excited. So we're going to start with the kid-focused items, uh, just because we've got to build up the excitement. Um, I think we have a splash page here. Hopefully we do. Yes, the Mandalorian. So we will reveal a fan Mandalorian item later. But we also know that kids are going to love The Mandalorian as well. We are excited to see The Mandalorian excitement building. Uh, we're excited that Disney Plus is going to be coming to Europe next year. Uh, there's a lot of buzz. It launches in a couple weeks. There have been a lot of uh, media uh, kind of articles on it lately. We're really excited. It looks awesome. So for all of those kids out there that love The Mandalorian, they're going to want to role play as The Mandalorian. So our first exclusive reveal today is a kid Mandalorian mask. No one in the world has seen this before. Uh, this is for all those kids out there that want to role play as the Mandalorian, run around pretending they're that great character. I've seen you do this in the office. Absolutely, just, yeah. Just Put this mask on and run around. The kids <laughs> it's for the kids and the fans out there. So, great item in our uh, basic mask assortment. Uh, kind of brings those movie accurate details to life. Uh, now, if you're a kid, or apparently a Patrick Schneider, role-playing as a Mandalorian with this mask, in addition to this mask, you also need our next reveal, our, oops, our Mandalorian gauntlet. So this is our second kid item we're revealing today, never seen before. It uh, goes along with that mask, a great movie-accurate gauntlet. As you can see, incorporates our Nerf darts, uh, Nerf firing darts. So. A great, great kid line for our kids to role play out next year. Absolutely. Fantastic. All righty. So those two items were great, but... Onto the fan. Onto the fan item. So, first, the Black Series. Very excited. You Very want to excited. I think we, uh, we have some silhouettes to reveal, but uh, from an entertainment standpoint, um, 
you know, we've shown a lot in terms of Rise of Skywalker, but um, there's still more. There's a, it's a whole movie, and we yeah. still have plenty of uh, characters left to do. We saw some stuff that was sort of exclusive to the vintage at launch, and uh, there's certainly um, you know a bit more that we want to be able to do there. So we have, we have some good figures in the line already. We've got we showed uh, obviously Ray, Kylo, uh, Namiaki, Janna, but but you're right. We got some more figures we need to reveal. So should we show the silhouette? Let's show that All silhouette. Right. Let Who do we think guess. this is? Who that might be? Any thoughts? Any guesses? Night spread. Woo! Should we reveal it? All right. All right. Fair enough. So this is going to be the first Knight of Ren character for the Black Series Six Inch line. Again, we really wanted to. We now we have quite a few of them to do. So we wanted to just diversify between um, kind of the figures that we pilot and introduce into the vintage collection, as well as uh, the ones that we'd look to bring into the Black Series. So, so was there a way you picked which one, or is it an any mini mini mo kind of moment? Or? I mean, we <laughs> kind of went with our coolest looking ones. I mean, this guy literally has a, like a grenade for a face. So it's uh, it's an awesome <laughs> form. It has some great. Uh, accessories in terms of seeing like that vibro sai uh, in terms of a melee weapon, but then also having his great sidearm with, with a kind of a heavy duty uh, blaster. Um, so, and we always have discussions about balancing out obviously the, the kind of coolest main characters we want in both the Black Series and Vintage, but for the Knights of Ren, we wanted to get multiple different characters out there, so that kind of drove that decision. Some more looks there at the item. All right. You want to tee up our next reveal? I do. You want the silhouette? I'm really excited for this next one. So, uh, as we hop to the silhouette, and there's some few more giveaways on this one. Um, <laughs> it's not a lot of mystery. <laughs> we can probably go ahead and show. All right. Her. Who's excited for Zori Bliss? Yeah. Oh. All right. So, Patrick, <laughs> I like this guy up here. He's applauding with me. He's so, uh, Sorry Bliss, in terms of her Black Series reveal, um, we know uh, sort of this is going to be portrayed by Carrie Russell, so we're really excited about seeing uh, kind of how she'd be brought into the Star Wars universe. The figure itself is awesome. She has her dual wielding pistols, her substantial new helmet, because we really don't know what's going to be under there from a portrait standpoint. Is she Twi'leks? Is she hiding some, you know, ultra headpiece within that? But, um, the figure itself is just sort of a beautiful representation of the character. Um, you know, great uh, variations to the armor and the outfit, and of course the posability of this figure is fantastic. Absolutely. Great. So that rounds out our Episode 9 figures in the Black Series. That's all we have planned for this year. We'll see if any more come in the future, but I think we've got a look here at the full line. Yeah, some great figures in there. Yeah, it's a good assortment, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you, you did say there were three fan. Absolutely, there are three fan reveals. Yeah, two. So two from the Black Series, our final reveal for the day that no one's ever seen before, comes from the Vintage Collection. So again, we'll show this splash page. So Vintage fans out there, we know, we get it. We launched some cool Mandalorian items in the Black Series, and Vintage fans were reasonably saying, like, where's ours? Where's our Mandalorian items? Well, as you saw, yesterday in Paris, we revealed Cara Dune from the Mandalorian. We've got one more after today, at least one more, but for today, we kind of we kind of threw people for a loop yesterday, right? We showed this slide, and everyone was like, well, obviously, it's going to be the Mandalorian. And Until you made the caveat, it's not the Mandalorian. I know, I think I specifically <laughs> said that. It wasn't the Mandalorian yesterday today it is the Mandalorian let's hear it for the Mandalorian All right. All right, thanks it was more than just that guy playing along that time <laughs> so the Mandalorian finally coming to the vintage collection it'll be out next year in 2020 so obviously based on that uh, Pablo Pascal uh, Pedro Pascal <laughs> uh, uh, which will be fantastic uh, you can see up there all the accessories so, on the accessories there, yeah. a pretty familiar looking rifle. Absolutely, so eagle-eyed fans out there will know that that rifle is based on the rifle from the holiday special. So, one thing we really love that we're seeing in The Mandalorian is John Favreau is a huge fan, and he's really kind of going back uh, to a lot of very kind of classic references for The Mandalorian. So it comes with that uh, rifle, comes with a cloak, a uh, pistol, anything else about the item, Sam? I think the biggest thing is definitely as we were able to you know, strive to bring newness to the vintage collection, um, we're always
always looking to you know, make these as close as we can from detail standpoint, but also really try to push the envelope in terms of the articulation. So, um, you know, we're doing a lot more in terms of the neck and really take into consideration kind of what the entire Rogue One Stormtrooper, um, we're able to sort of bring this to a Mandalorian form. So uh, if it's something you guys are a fan of, we're certainly looking to keep doing it more in the future. Absolutely. And again, we will have at least one more vintage Mandalorian reveal in the next week that we're really excited keep about. my eyes peeled. Absolutely. So, oh, this is basically our lineup of Mandalorian vintage items. You can see Cara Dune and the Mandalorian there together for the first time. <laughs> A happy couple. Um, okay, we're moving on next to some business items. So these are not reveals. So uh, we wanted to show this to you guys. We know in talking with the fans here in Europe, uh, we know from being here at conventions that distribution uh, can be a challenge. It can be a challenge to get, I'm seeing some kind of like you know, nods in the crowd, like yeah. Uh, it can be a challenge to get the items that you want so much. Uh, we've heard this, one of the things we've done as a company, you may have noticed is we moved to a new packaging. It's what we call five lens language packaging. Uh, basically, in the past, our EU packaging has had four languages on it. Our North America packaging had four languages. There was only one language different, and someone finally realized at Hasbro, why don't we just add that language, and then the same packaging can literally go global. What this means is that our, we can get more products to the EU. We don't have to hit a separate minimum order quantity to get products here. So this is an effort we made in order to get product here, and hopefully you've seen that this fall a little bit, and we'll continue to make those efforts in the future, uh, which is really great. I think it's I think it's a great move. It's going to make certainly our lives in the UK much easier, and Absolutely. definitely improve what we can offer for sure. Fantastic. Uh, a couple other business items. So at New York Comic Con, we revealed a vintage item, uh, Leia. Uh, we said that it was VC number 150, and then some eagle... Sure about that? I know, I always have to think about it. We said it was 150, and then some Eagle Eye fans saw that it came out, a few pieces came out as VC-164. Uh, so we just want to set the record straight. Those few pieces of Leia out as VC-164. Uh, those were not intentional, but those are out in the market, so those will be cool variants. Leia is VC-150, and the Cara Dune that we revealed in Paris is VC-164. So those are the official VC numbers. Every vintage collection number will be accounted for, because we know that's important. Um, and those Leia's that are out there as VC-164 will just be special and you can have them as additions in your collection, which is great. Um, and one other question that came about, you can see up here the special action figure set. Uh, some eagle-eyed fans have noticed that uh, it's obviously an Empire Strikes Back themed set. Uh, with Luke, Yoda, and Darth Vader, uh, but it's in that classic double bars. Uh, basically, uh, we should have mentioned this when we revealed it, but as we went back to the ranch on uh, Hasbro, uh, we discussed it. Uh, when we had been designing this item, we always look back to precedent for the vintage collection. And in the vintage collection for special action figure sets, they've been done in both ways. They've been done episodic specific, and then there are also kind of F5 and F6 items that have been done in that double bar style. So we had a discussion, and there was no kind of clear precedent to draw from. Since we are moving to the five language packaging, you can see that translation up there. We wanted to keep the logo clean, just as Star Wars without an Empire Strikes Back. So that will be our new vintage collection principle moving forward. All special action figure sets will adhere to that earlier principle and will be on the classic New Hope Star Wars double bars. So we always like to clear up questions. There's great questions. So if you have any questions about the items we revealed today, let us know and maybe we'll clarify them on our next panel. On that topic, our last business item, next panel. So again, we've awoken to the fact that we've got great fans in Europe. We should have realized it sooner. We've realized it now. We've been coming to London Comic Con the past, uh, this is our third year now. Um, and our tour continues next week with more reveals. So follow us, we'll be in six days in Italy, in Lucca. The day after that, we'll be in Barcelona, in Spain. And then later in December, we'll be at Comic Con Dortmund in Germany. Again, we'll be revealing a similar number of items uh, as we did here, more vintage Mandalorian, more Black Series prequels, uh, and more. So tune into those conventions if you want to see what's coming out. Um, and with that, we have timed this perfectly. We have 15 minutes for Q&A. So again, we want to hear from you guys. We want to hear what questions you have. Uh, don't, don't feel like any question is too tough. We're ready for them uh, about the business side, about product, about what product you want to see. So we've got two microphones on either side. Uh, feel free to queue up there. Uh, and we're happy to answer whatever questions you have.
Uh, if you can, I think there's microphones so over there if you want to queue up. Aisles, then you can... So that everyone can hear the question. Yes, over there. And I think maybe we'll just go back and forth to each microphone. So yes, let's start over there. Uh, are there any plans of uh, re-releasing all of the old clones? Because the mold's kind of broken because all of the Commander Wolves kind of fall apart on the arm. This is uh, in the Black Series or in the Vintage Collection? The Black Series one. And also they're all the wrong color because he like swapped from matte to gloss. And now the old ones don't really fit with the new ones. And now all the Cody's don't work because the only trooper for Cody is gloss, but he's matte. And so all, ugly. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll answer the first part. I'll let Sam feel the part about them being ugly. Uh, so. Absolutely. So as you may know, we have a Black Series archive line, and we launched that this year, and that was specifically to answer that question. Fans would come up to us in the past and then say, hey, that Boba, you know, I started collecting the Black Series in 2015. That Boba Fett you launched in 2013, I want, how can we, it's selling for $200 in the aftermarket. How can we solve that? And so we launched the Black Series archive as a way to get those key characters back out there, and also for the fans who already have them to apply new technology like photoreal deck so those items that you mentioned, we can't say anything that we haven't revealed yet, but you know, some of those could be great candidates for the archive line. And then Sam, do you want to speak to the ugly part? Yeah, sorry they're ugly. Um, <laughs> no, the, uh, the big thing that we're definitely looking to do in terms of um, both Black Series and the Vintage Collection is definitely to establish the levels of consistency. The, in terms of the clones, like we've had clones in the, uh, in the figure line since I think the original orange yeah, packaging, the beginning. number 14. Um, so in terms of where we're looking to bring new clones in terms of new forms, new troopers, new designations, um, absolutely there's going to be more opportunity to bring newness. Um, I think we have some potential return of some Clone Wars animation coming with Disney Plus. So um, there's certainly going to be opportunity to get more newness into the line. In terms of re sort of reestablishing that level of consistency, that's definitely something that we're also looking to strive towards. Um, and again, finding new opportunities to, whether it be through Archive or through the Exclusives program, uh, re-releasing characters or getting uh, really just new troopers out there entirely. Um, and I should say, in addition to the Black Series Archive for the Vintage Collection, obviously we can't do a different packaging style, uh, but this year, this was actually a request from the UK team, because uh, they heard it from the fans, uh, we added two waves in our Vintage Collection this year that basically served the same purpose as the Archive, getting those main characters from the past back out there, so you can see that in both lines. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Um, it's a question um, about 2018 San Diego Comic Con. You kind of informally announced a Clone Wars wave, and I was wondering if there was any more word on that at all. Because um, me and some other people, like, you know, it's a uh, characters like, you know, Asajj Ventures, yeah. like a Clone Wars Ahsoka, yeah. a few different more Clone Troopers. Um, what did you promise? I, I, so well, the promise. It was, you, it was, you weren't at San Diego in 2018. No, I wasn't. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure Alex was. It was not. What's on me? I don't recall that specific claim. I think maybe the question was the Clone Wars is coming back. Will we see more Clone Wars figures in the yeah, future? Yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, and I think it was general. That still holds. We are excited for the Clone Wars. Uh, obviously, this year, we wanted to focus. We have too much entertainment this year. We've got Episode Nine, The Mandalorian, Jedi Fallen Order. With Clone Wars coming back next year, that statement still holds. We will absolutely be having more Clone Wars characters in the line next year. So stay tuned for, maybe not the EU conventions, but stay tuned to future conventions for those reveals, and you will be happy. Ah, oh, thanks, sir. Absolutely. You're all lads. Hey. Welcome to London. Thank you. Thank you. I like, um, I like the, the drink there, that's nice. That's <laughs> done. That's what it comes about. Uh, I just wanted to ask, obviously everyone's buzzing for episode 9. Um, when are we going to get that uh, spicy Papa Pals? The spicy... Spicy who? Papa Pals. Palpatine. Oh, oh, Papa Pals. Oh, the F9 Palpatine. Uh, so we always say, you know, we can't uh, reveal anything that we haven't revealed yet. Uh, this being said, you know, we're excited to see Episode 9. Like, we're excited to see... Obviously, we don't have an Episode 9 Palpatine in the line right now. We've always said there are some assets that we get 12 to 18 months in advance and can develop figures for. There are other figures like uh, F7 Luke Skywalker that we saw 
at the same time that all of you did. So we're excited to see episode nine, and if that Palpatine is indeed as spicy as you think he might be, uh, maybe we'll see him in the line in the future. Nice. nice. <laughs> Have a great time. Love in the cosplay. Love it. Um, quick question with regards to um, going back to the last panel that you did with the reveals as well. I was saying really good reveals, and currently now with the carbonized line. Hopefully, we we'll see more carbonized line because I thought they were absolutely fantastic. I love them. But please, uh, can we include stands in, in the, the figures? Because the stands at the moment have been so. so Really inconsistent. Yeah. You had it with the uh, Luke Skywalker with the, um, the exclusives. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Luke Skywalker with the Jedi Knights. Yeah. That was brilliant, but more stands. Okay. Really, we, we needed because some of them are so top heavy and and they just don't really display very well. But if you could think about maybe some slipping some stands in, that would be a massive help. For that. Yeah. So with the carbonized collection, that again was a you know we we thought it was cool. We wanted to see what you guys thought. The response has been overwhelming. So you know we might see more carbonized in the future. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on the stands? Yeah. So for the stands itself, um, again, sort of it definitely has been inconsistent in terms of uh, where it's gotten out there. We've really used it as um, an element for some of our retail exclusives. So we had uh, like the. Um, kind of the clone or uh, rebels inspired uh, rocket trooper. Um, we had the trash compactor Luke. We had clone Shout commander Obi Wan, and I think uh, more recently it's coming out with the um, Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight. So um, absolutely, if feedback's heard, it's definitely something we've been hearing in terms of uh, looking to get more of that into the line, and um, we're certainly keep that in mind going forward. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Hi guys. Hey. Again. Uh, new reveals look great, by the way. Right, thank you. Um, with regard to the Black Series General Grievous that was had a reference point with D1 on it, I wondered what the decision-making process was not to have Emperor Palpatine with his chair as a deluxe, and basically what the terms of reference are for those deluxe figures in the Black Series range. Yeah. So, in, in terms of getting newness into Deluxe, we definitely saw it as a great opportunity to bring all new figures into the line itself. Um, and as we did a character like the Emperor, we didn't see just doing partial updates to the figure, throwing it in a bigger box and being like, now it's a Deluxe figure. We really want to utilize that um, you know, new form of tracking the figures themselves as a way of getting brand newness into the line. Uh, but Palpatine, the reason he came up is because he was looking like such a great candidate for the archive. But um, yeah, I think I think I asked Sam. I was like, Palpatine, can we get him into the archive? And, Sam and I was said like, no. No. <laughs> uh, so and it was both for Palpatine as well as for a Return of the Jedi Luke, where it's like. I, we understand there's a desire to have those figures in the line, but we didn't want to put out sub um, subpar versions of them. We really wanted to get them back out um, and really do those figures justice. So uh, getting the Emperor um, back out there as way of an exclusive, that item really was only able to happen because we were able to partner with someone like uh, Amazon for that. Um, and being able to go to a larger box, go to a larger price point that really is able to adapt and take into consideration all the newness that we were bringing in there in terms of the throne, having the three swappable portraits, the lightning hands, and of course going to the new soft goods. Um, it probably would have priced out of the deluxe price point because we're really trying to keep that about um, kind of retaining that, um, you know, $30, yeah. $30 price point. Um, but absolutely, I think um, in terms of well, you'll see more from the Deluxe line, um, and hopefully, I think everyone will be really happy with what we have planned. And a little more. So we, we've had a lot of, far too many conversations about the collector numbers, but we know they're important. Uh, early on, uh, we decided not to number the, ex the retail exclusives, uh, because in some cases, they're kind of slight variants. We know that they can be difficult to get. So for the completionists out there, we didn't want to number those and then have that be kind of a, a huge pain point. Um, and as a result, someone similar like Emperor Palpatine, since he already existed in the line and we were just updating him, we didn't want to put him into the main line because then he would be numbered and some people might feel like they have to get him instead as an exclusive. He's out there for the ones who want them. He's not numbered so you don't feel like you have to get him, but if you want that update, you can. But we will certainly be continuing the deluxe line with D2, D3, etc. Right. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Thank you. 
Hi guys, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Um, have you got any updates on the um, 40th anniversary of the Empire Strikes Back? Um, we're excited for it. I'm still excited for it. So basically, again, we've got so much going on this fall uh, with Episode 9, Mandalorian, Jedi Fallen Order, that we didn't want to talk too much about uh, Empire Strikes Back yet. Uh, we know that we had a great uh, 40th anniversary program for A New Hope two years ago. Uh, kind of great assortment there with the six-inch figures on card backs. Uh, we're definitely going to do something for the 40th anniversary. We already know about the, the fan's choice Luke Dagobah that'll be in our Black Series line. We know about the Boba Fett helmet that we revealed at San Diego Comic-Con, Hyperreal Luke Skywalker we revealed at San Diego Comic-Con. Nothing more to reveal today, but uh, we're definitely excited about that and there will be a lot in the line. I'm just a like, big fan of the carbonized Absolutely. Version. Absolutely, that's great to hear. I think we probably have time for two more. Yeah? Okay, great. Oh, hi there. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good, good. I love the vintage collection. Absolutely, I'd love to hear it. it. I wonder when it had finished, because it's costing me a fortune. Yeah. And the wife <laughs> wants the spare room back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if we can help with that. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, so the question Wait, is, do will... Do you want us to finish? <laughs> Is it just going to continue? I, will, I mean, the, the, the great thing about Star Wars is just, you know, we've had over 40 plus years of entertainment to really be able to, to lean on that. Um, and of course, with the continuation of new entertainment, there's certainly no plan to, uh, to end that line anytime soon. Um, so apologies to you and your wife. Um, but I, I think, um, you know, there's still a lot we have to do from classic, from prequels, from uh, you know, realistic interpretations of animated characters, and then, of course, support of everything that we're seeing for the new entertainment. I think this was, there was a rumor about a month ago that the vintage collection was ending. Uh, maybe that's what you're referring to. We spoke on this at New York Comic Con. The rumor was not started by Jedi Temple Archives, I should say that. Um, to set the record straight, it was not started by them. Uh, but no, there are no plans to end the vintage collection. That is categorically untrue. We. You know, we have it planned in the line for, for years to come. We're excited about the future. So again, apologies to your wife. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely, thank you. And I think time for one last question. Hi there. Um, hey. I would love to know a bit more about your job. So what part of the product design would you be responsible for? Absolutely, Sam's the designer, so he can speak to the design aspect. All right, um, is that clock accurate? We have, I, yeah, I have two we minutes. just have two okay. minutes. This the is abridged great. version. He could go yeah. for hours. So, uh, design on Star Wars, it's a great, it's definitely my dream job uh, in terms of, this was like the biggest property for me as a kid in terms of um, really what I would say influenced my, my love of toy uh, and probably the career path that I ultimately went down. Um, but it's, uh, in terms of it, it's a very creative collaboration. It's working really closely with our partners at Lucasfilm, the story teams with uh, archives, movie sets, uh, and we're able to, you know, what we really strive to deliver on Star Wars, which I think is different from any other brand, is that level of authenticity and detail. Um, you know, it's every outfit has so much care that goes into the texturing and uh, the colors uh, and very physical elements that they bring and we try to replicate that as much as we can uh, between our action figures, between our premium role play products in sort of delivering those theatrical experiences with things like our force effects lightsabers. So um, I definitely am blessed with being able to work on quite a diverse library of products but uh, it's certainly a dream come true. Um, and do you want me to? I think you know? <laughs> I think we got to cut off. Um, thank you. It was a great question, and we will say uh, we're getting cut off now. We're getting the you know cut off signs, but we are going to continue this Q and A down in the booth. So if you want to know more about Sam's job, or if by any chance you want to know about Alex or I's job on the business side, uh, or if you have any other questions about the items we revealed or anything about the line, again we always say we love talking with the fans. We want to hear the the things you like about the line, the frustrations you have. So come on down to the booth, uh, or come down to the booth for any of the other reasons we mentioned. Uh, we'll talk to you, we'll show you the product, it'll be a great time, uh, but I think we got to end now. I think that's it, so thank you so much guys, thank you for coming down, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you all. <laughs>